YouTube stream so I can see the chat. And from there, if we're live, welcome to everyone. We're live. All right. Houdini, what'd you think, man? Beat down from the beginning. I know you're in the uh, the farms of Indiana right now, and you didn't meet, need much service to get the lay of the land of this one because it was over by the time fans got their popcorn. Not so much, actually. It was, you know, about a six-point game with seven, eight minutes left in the first half and then just a, a barrage of threes, which we'll get to. But your overall thoughts as we welcome in everyone on the chat line. Looks to me like your, your voice is synced to your face, although you haven't talked yet. The moment of truth, Houdini. We're getting better. We're we're just a slight delay right now. I think by the third or fourth show, we might knock it down completely. Um, but I mean, we did what we were supposed to do. Detroit Mercy. It's um, no surprise. Not a not a juggernaut of a squad by any means. But um, I think we did what we needed to, and it was nice to see some of the guys that we thought could shoot put the ball, um, you know, in the net from the perimeter. So that's definitely what I like to see. There was obviously some. Some other things that weren't too great, but I mean, hey, you beat them by 32, I'll take it. The final horn has sounded, it seems like. Let's go with 2-0, and although I could have done that at halftime. 93-61 is the final score. Um, I got final quarter. What, what am I doing down there, Houdini? Come on. that's that's You said it before the show. That is how you lose the viewers right away with a final quarter when you're not even playing quarters. How do I get that quarter out of there? Is it just stuck? Yeah, that's fine. It, 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 it sounds like we have never watched a basketball game in our lives. So uh, the final quarter was probably our best quarter so far this game, this, uh, we, this we, year. We, we played well the final quarter. That's where we were really shooting. Uh, we're going to tell you all about Cincinnati shooting in this one. want to give you a little bit of the storylines that we are jumping into from this one. Six Bearcats in double figures, none of them the big guys. All six of their key contributing guards reach double figures, including a career high from Jizzle James. C.J. Frederick is in absolute oven. All eyes on Dave Yost. Yost right now is probably the most important man in Cincinnati basketball. I'd say even more important than Wes Miller, and that is not even an exaggeration. Wait until you hear what Dave Yost said about the NCAA today. It is getting spicy in the kitchen, and could Rayvon Griffith be redshirting? What's going on, everyone? Chuck Walter and Houdini with you. Casey, go ahead and, and introduce the crowd to our man Houdini based on his high school stats, because Cincinnati was hot tonight. Our man Hudson was not so hot in high school. Um, Look Listen. at that. And this is this is your first chance to react, Hudson. I, I put it on last time. I'm not going to do this yeah. every show, but now your voice syncs up. Um, the, the four and a half, that's fine with me. Because if you scroll down, we don't have it. This is just a picture of the first games. You actually did put up 18 against St. X after Alter. But 36% uh, for the floor, 26% from deep. Mm. That's all we need to show you. But that's not going to get the job done. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd say this. Wes Miller shouldn't be putting this type of kid in the rotation. But that's why I'm here. That's why I'm just doing the the post game show and I'm not in the game, Chuck. But the stats are misleading, misinformation. The if you notice the first like six games, I went I think oh for like twenty two, and then I started to heat up slightly. Okay, so give me a little bit of a break. I started out slow. I was coming off an injury. Things happen. Okay, but I I always had the work ethic and the grind. Okay, nobody can take that away from me. Well, you know, I put that in there. It's not just because I wanted to trash you right out of the gate and introduce the crowd to who you are. It's it's the perfect segue. The king of segues here. The Bearcats did the same thing. Started off very slow in the first game, 5 of 25 from deep. They had 13 threes by the end of it. We're about to hop into the show. Harrow, what's up? Thanks for saying we look good. Mark Fetters, our man. Uh, Mark got rid of his Ohio State OVI. Uh, apparently, he doesn't want um he, he doesn't want Connor Stallion spying on him because, you know, he spies on everyone within these programs. We got Alex Wallace, our man, who apparently thinks we're funny. We'll take that. Casey McAllister behind the ones and the twos. Big Mac, how we doing, my man? Michael Ackley, good to see you as well from the gents. Chatterbox Bearcats, right now, roll the tape, Casey. All right, everyone, welcome into the show. Let's start it off with our first topic of the game. That is, Lord have mercy on Detroit Mercy in this one. They traveled 
quite a long way to Cincinnati, Ohio to get their fannies pummeled in this one. It was a 30 plus point game at halftime. Cincinnati put up 60 in the first half. Six players, six guards for Cincinnati all reach double figures. Um, if the Bearcats play like this throughout the rest of the season, I think they're going to be a pretty good basketball team if they can have, you know, seven, eight guys that are hitting multiple threes in a game. Um, let's start off with the fact that let's just tell you Detroit Mercy based off what we saw against Toledo based off what we saw today. I mean, you could pretty much throw away the box score in this one because uh, Mike Davis at this point is collecting a paycheck, you know, took Indiana to a national championship. I think at his first or second year, I had some good teams at UAB. You get shuffled around. He was at like Texas, uh, Texas Southern, I think. And now maybe a stop in between there. Now he's here when you're on your fourth or fifth job and you're in your sixties and you're making like $200,000 to coach at that point, you just stay on the sidelines and you say, keep it up, fellas keep it up they're just a lot better than us this one was over from the get-go uh Cincinnati looked great man your overall thoughts I, I mean we we love scheduling a little Mike Davis out of conference because it it really gets the confidence up of the team I I can't believe he was the head coach of Indiana <laughs> um it, the zone that he was running after we hit I think like 12 threes in a row wide open I'm sitting there going what the hell is this guy doing like, what is Mike Davis doing? Even if you're pl collecting a paycheck, maybe switch up the defense. I mean, guys were 10 feet open. If you're a college scholarship player, you're going to knock those down more often than not. So, you know, shout out Mike Davis. I I'm a fan personally, and I, I hope we keep scheduling them to, you know, after kind of a dud shooting last week or the la the first game, um, get the confidence up. We had guys like CMOS that looked like what we thought he would look like today. Um, I was really confident in him. Obviously, CJ, I think it's – I'm already about to say it, second game in the damn season, best shooter in UC history. I mean, that is a pretty stroke. So, and, and our boy Newman, man, that's a grown, grown man. I know people hate on Newman, <laughs> you included. That's a I've grown never man. hated I mean, on he, Newman. Oh, offensively, offensively, I think there's a lot to be desired. But today, he knocks down like – three of his first four, I think it was. Let him fly, Newman. It was contagious. Uh, Newman hit the first one of the game. Then from there, I think Seamoss knocked one down. Frederick hit a couple. Dan Skillings got in the mix for a few. Jizzle James knocked one down. A career high from him. So all around good stuff. I'm just laughing at it. One TV timeout, Terry Nelson was talking about how Mike Davis, he needs to read the scouting report because apparently – you know, C.J. Frederick was – it wasn't apparently. It was apparent from watching that he was open throughout the entire first half with that zone. And, and maybe he, he saw the, the box score or the roster and saw that Odio Guama is a big 6'10 and Victor Lockins seven feet tall. And and maybe he didn't know that the two guys, Jamil and Aziz, were ineligible. He's like, these guys are huge. They got four seven-footers running down the floor. We're going to have to zone them. Little did they know, apparently Cincinnati's the best shooting team in the country. You, you, he he didn't even watch the film or, or go back and, and look at Frederick from years past or Lukosius or anything. He literally just looked at game one box score, saw five of 25, saw those bigs down low and said, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to zone them. Maybe on another day it works if the Bearcats are ice, but they were hot as hell in this one. Let's run through the box score. Victor Locken had eight and five rebounds. Odio Guama had four and seven boards. John Newman, 13 points, eight rebounds. Day Day Thomas, 11 points on two or three shooting from deep. Frederick was four or five from deep. He had 14 points. We got a Sage Tolentino sighting for the first time this year. He went 0 of 2, did grab a rebound, actually shot a three. He missed it. Jizzle James, career high 13 points, two rebounds, three assists. Josh Reed had five points, but he did grab 12 rebounds. Dan Skillings, 11 points, eight rebounds. Simas Lukosius, 10 points, five boards. And then CJ Anthony, with four points just your overall thought is the bearcats improved to two and oh all you can do is beat the team on your schedule it helps a lot on a friday night when you kick their ass yeah i mean and like i said there's i think there's a lot that goes into getting gaining confidence in some of these lesser opponents the one thing that stuck out to me uh, after you know the news today and we'll probably get into this a little bit later um with aziz being the second waiver not going through and essentially being told he's not playing basketball this season was the, I think it was Newman on a fast break in the first half. And he lobbed up an alley-oop for Victor Locken. 
and he, uh, I don't know what you would call it. He couldn't really get off the ground at all and then got rejected by the rim underneath it. And I just, I wanted to projectile vomit as I saw it because Aziz would have tomahawk reverse dunked that. And so now we got to deal with the Victor lock in. It's probably going to throw people off. It's like Newman. He's used to throwing lobs to Aziz. Victor Locken isn't as ease, guys. Okay, we got to realize that now, and maybe Sage is going to start having to get some playing time. But like we said in the first show, I think going small is our best bet um, with having Odie or Victor out there. I don't think you can have both of them out there and be a threat on the perimeter, so I think that clogs the lane a bit. But, yeah, I mean, Aziz, how did you take the news, Chuck? It was tough. I took it with a double shot of whiskey. No, no, no whiskey today. I, I took it at work, unfortunately, but I did see Dave Yost's response, which we're getting into in a minute. We're saving the best for last, keeping you here for the entire show because he had some, I, I don't know if you want to call them hilarious. I would just say epic, epic bites in his little, um, in, in his little statement that he had, but John Newman today, I think safe to say maybe his best game is a Cincinnati Bearcat. And for those fans out there, True, I guess myself included, that kind of laughed when Wes Miller compared him to, I guess he didn't compare him to anyone. He just said he was one of the best defenders in the entire country. I was like, Wes, he's he's a good on-ball defender, but I don't think he's Reuben Patterson. He's pretty good. And offensively, he, he's shown a little bit of bounce and the capabilities to throw down. The biggest question has always been, is he better than a 31, 32% three-point shooter? A, a lot to be desired based on what we've seen throughout his career, but tonight that's a step in the right direction. When he can knock down two or three in, the, in a row and Dan Skillings can do the same thing, all of a sudden this team becomes very dangerous. Yeah, and I, I think with, with John Newman, I know he knocked down a few threes. I don't think that's ever going to be his game, obviously, um, in, you know, in his senior last season. Um, but he's the type of guy, whether you love him or hate him, based on the roster construction, he's got to play because he's lengthy. He can actually defend, and he's probably, if not the most athletic, one of the most athletic guys on the floor. So you get what you get with Newman. He's got to be on the floor, especially when we start getting into Big 12 conference. He can match up athletically with almost anybody on the court. So you're going to see some, you're going to see a lot of Newman. It's, it is what it is. You're going to see a lot of Newman and he played well today and hopefully he continues. Uh, welcome to the chat, Lindsay. She says, let's go jizzle. James, welcome E-Train 513. That's our man, Elliot, who apparently shot a, a 106 at, at Shinnecock, or I don't know where he's playing, but shot a 106 the other day. Swing's looking good. Unfortunately, not a bad, the, uh, not a bad score. Uh, 106, yeah. To each their own, right? To each their own. Don't judge. And then Sir Boy Wonder is in here. Um, any Any Musketeer fans join tonight? Uh, they didn't look great. Cincinnati looked great. Cats get the W. On to the next topic. That's. I, I think I'm going to put this up for every single show because it's an easy one. Maybe if you want to give me a, something that's a little more creative for this banner on YouTube. By the way, we are streaming on YouTube for those that are listening to this podcast in the morning. We put this on the uh, the Apple podcast app after every single game. But the, the banner is simple. It's fire away, CJ. Knocks down, um, knocks down four more today in five attempts. If you give him space, you said it earlier. He's the he's the most automatic shooter. I think I've. I mean, it's it's sensationalism at its finest. Maybe it's recency biased, but when he's open, I think he's like the best UC shooter in in history. At least that I can think of, dating back to yeah. Melvin Levitt. I, I don't know if you're wrong on that. I mean, he's the type of guy that if he gets hot enough, um, he can win games by himself. Obviously, he's not going to be the guy creating a ton of shots for himself, but they almost got him in kind of a Steph Curry type of role where he's running around screens left and right trying to get the the open space. And if you give him, I mean, I don't care if he's three feet beyond the arc, I like that shot. I like it a lot. We're not seeing as many, I guess, you know, it's two games into the season. But last year's offense, we had more talent, I would say, from a overall, you know, your best player with Landers Nolly and DeJulius. You could argue and say those are still would be the most talented guys, even on this roster. But it seems a little more cohesive with these guys, more ball movement, um, more guys running around, um, setting screens, things like that. It's not as much one-on-one -on -one 
let's do a, a step back three. So I think that's a, a positive that we've seen. But yeah, CJ Frederick, man, thank God that we got him because I think we'd be in a world of hurt without a dead eye shooter like that. Chat, we need your help. Here's a little fun little exercise we're doing here. Greatest shooters in UC history. Just start throwing out names. Um, we could throw out David Cumberland, who was a sharp shooter, shot at about 40% the, a few years back. But COVID year, uh, the year that ended in COVID, didn't hit the heart the same way. Uh, Jihad Muhammad could shoot threes in volume. I don't know if you'd call him one of the biggest sharpshooters in UC history. Kilpatrick could obviously knock him down. Titus Rubles was sensational. I thought that Kenny Belton, when he had some opportunities to shoot some threes. You remember Kenny Belton when he shot a, a free throw? I think he did it twice in the same season. He, he shot a free throw and just, like, dropped it. And they're like, uh, we're going the other way with it. Mick Cronin just like, what the hell was that, Kenny? You remember that guy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're, no, you're I, looking I intently. I did. Well, no, I'm looking at. I, I'm assuming this was said before this when you said who are the best shooters in UC history, and Sir Boy Wonder said guys like Sean Kilpatrick. I can agree. And then he threw in Titus Rubles. He threw in Titus Rubles. That makes me nervous because Titus Rubles might have been the worst shooter in NCAA history. I think technically by volume. Um, Jacob Evans, we'll go with that. I like that one. Um, but yeah, I mean, Kashmir Wright, I don't know what his what he was shooting average wise. He was a dead eye shooter. Then you got to look at our boy Nick Williams, Field Williams from way back in the day. Those guys could shoot the ball. Williams, yes. Steve Logan could knock it down. Everyone from the '90s, it seemed like could hit threes. Dewan Baker, the list goes on and on. But C.J. Frederick, I mean, he's up there with one of the prettiest strokes. Um, defensively, I'm interested to see what C.J. Would uh, CMOS, would even Jizzle playing against, you know, some some stepped up competition of the Big 12 with some of these guys give you defensively against those teams. But they look good today against Detroit Mercy. But again, I mean, with all due respect to those kids at Detroit Mercy, I hope they're staying over in Clifton tonight, maybe have a hotel and they don't have the long bus drive back. They could stop by Uncle Woody's. They can get some giant pitchers of some alcohol and drain their SARS. If they're 21, if not, they can go home and play Jenga virtually with their girlfriends. Yes. But, I mean, for God's sakes, that's a team that's not going to win many games. I think they're on the horizon. Um, it'll be interesting to see when they play Northern Kentucky and some of those teams that we know and love in the horizon, the right states of the world. But yeah, that team, um, if anyone's watching from Detroit Mercy, I know there's someone on the chat that's probably, and speaking of which, I actually had to bring this up because I'm a little bit concerned and intrigued by this. Why does the ESPN plus broadcast focus on the opposition so much? Like, it's the Big 12 Network. It's clearly a UC broadcast. Terry Nelson's on the call. Uh, Kelsey Conway, who's like a – she, I think she's a UC alum, is on the call. And they're going over to Mike Davis's bench, and they're like, yeah, well, Coach Davis, his team, they, they worked really hard this in, in the offseason, and they think they're going to – I'm like, who gives a shit about Detroit Mercy? What are we doing here? Was that just me? Was anyone else like, all right, let's focus on the Bearcats. Let's talk some more Jameel and Aziz, maybe Rayvon Griffith, why he could be redshirting. Like, come on. No, we want to hear more about Mike Davis, man. We want to hear about this Detroit Mercy squad who went 12 and whatever, 20 last year. Um, yeah, I, I feel like they always do that, but it's usually like the janky broadcast. Like, I remember, I think we played a Mac school a couple years ago, and they had, like, the students run the broadcast. And I think I texted you, and I'm like, do you have any idea what the hell is it's happening? against Bowling Green. Is it, it was against Bowling Green. Yeah, it, it went viral. You know, it was like Sergio Dip. It went viral, and everyone's just like, what the hell is going on? I think they interviewed Mick Cronin or, or something, and it was just – there were some bad questions. It was uh, – it was, you know, it was student journalists. I was there one day. That red light turns on. When you're first getting into broadcasting, that red light turns on, and you either panic – or you panic. Like, that's the only thing. Or you're Tom Brenneman, and, you know, you came out of the womb with a silky voice, and um, you were born to be a broadcaster. Because for everyone else, with that first time you go out there with the red light on, you're, you're shockingly pretty good on camera for having never, you know, done it before. Um, I'm guessing that you had a couple PBRs up in northern Indiana. I think you're in Gary tonight. Gary, Indiana, great place. We're celebrating a huge Detroit Mercy win with a couple beverages. This is a Super Bowl win for me, man. Let's Two go, oh, baby. All, also, Sir Boy Wonder, I'm pretty sure he called us boring, took a little jab at us. Casey had to back us up. Like, these guys aren't boring. They do a good job. So, anyway, topic number four. Um, he didn't have a huge night, but I think he's going to have a huge season. But I wanted to throw it in there just because it's um, 
It's super califragilistic. Supercious. Someone needs to say that. Dan Horde, if you're listening to the show, I know we had him on the chatter. Super califragilistic CMOS Lucocious. Give it to me, Houdini. Uh, what do you think of him tonight? I think he's pretty smooth, nice little floor general, and could knock him down. I like him a lot. I, I, I saw him at Butler quite a bit, and it translated today, and I think it's going to translate the rest of the season. He's like a calming presence. When he has the ball, I feel pretty confident. Some of the other some of the other guards out there, like, you know, I love Day Day and I love Jizzle, but they're a little raw and a little out of control sometimes. Um, and he gives a calming presence that we we absolutely need. And, he, you know, he's a, he's a junior, so he's been there, done that. Um, and I think we're going to continue to see growth from C. If I could get his name right, I always want to say Simus. I don't know why, but it's CMOS. C-Moss. I got it. You, you taught me well. CMOS. CMOS. CMOS, um, which, which obviously means, I mean, I guess it does. I think it's a Mirar, which is C or look or whatever, but see more. And that's what he does. He, he sees more of the floor. He's, he's a floor general. Um, I think he runs the offense pretty well when he gets the ball at the top of the key, makes the right decisions. Is he, I mean, he shot at 40% from deep last year and I think 29% in his uh, freshman or sophomore year. I didn't watch enough of his games to know, like, if he is a lethal dead-eye sharpshooter, if that's more of like, uh, yeah, Justin Jennifer shot 40% his senior year, but Justin Jennifer wasn't like a, a dead-eye sharpshooter. Like, yeah, I would disagree. I thought Justin Jennifer by think- his senior year, if he was left open, it's a difference when you're a catch well, He was always guy. open. That's the thing. Yeah. Right. I don't. I don't think we necessarily need to see him, you know, doing dribble step back James Harden threes. But I no. I think um, if he's got a, a, a small amount of space, he'll be able to knock it down. Um, I'm not sure. Did you listen to the full coverage? Just Paul Reds Daily was saying, can we talk about the Detroit Mercy kid who quit on his team? And I was listening to it on silent on my phone, so I never got this. But this sounds like an interesting story. I don't know if you if you listened to the full coverage. I was setting up the uh, the broadcast at that point. Reds Daily is going to – that's our guy Greg. Greg's going to have to give us an update in the chat so we can read it on the air. Uh, let's welcome some more people to the show. Sean Krutka says ESPN is booty water. Um, ESPN Plus is for sure ass. There's no doubt about that. Um, who else we got in the chat today? Deanna. She lives near Gary, Indiana. Um, nice. Close to Chicago, Gary, Indiana. I think Gary, Indiana used to be like one of the biggest industrial cities in the United States back in the day. If if I'm not mistaken, it's it's the main scene or the setting. And I think it's guys and dolls. They had the Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana. Yep. So Michael Jackson's um, from here, man. There's a lot going on in Gary. Don't sleep on Gary. Good vacation spot. Don't sleep on yeah, Gary. Shout out to Deanna. Anyways, shout out Deanna. Next topic, Casey. Tee it up for me. Tee it up for me. Yost, yost. I, can oh, here, yost. I don't know if our audio is working right now. I can't really hear it on my end. The chat knows if it's working or not, but that's the scene from Remember the Titans where they take Alan out for, for um, who do they put in there? They, uh, who do they take out? Do they put Petey in there at defensive back? I think they, they take Allen out and they put Petey back there. But anyways, Dave Yost is – he's UC's chance this year to be a really good basketball team. This is the storyline of the season right now. Cincinnati, or the Ohio Attorney General, rather, is getting into it with the NCAA. Aziz Bandega was already denied his mental health waiver. Aziz came out today with his comments on his mental health, shared his story publicly. In a day and age right now where you – where you're for the student athletes and a student athlete has seven requirements to transfer. He does so and should get that two time transfer and doesn't get it. All of a sudden Dave Yost is saying that this is a a very illegal situation. I'm going to give you the, uh, the full breakdown here with some of his quotes, hop in the chat right now and and tell me what you think about the NCAA one. Uh, I went off on the NCAA on our last show, and I'm not going to do it right now because it's the live show and there may be kids on there. Ah, fuck it. This is Chuck and Houdini after dark, baby. NCAA stinks. Bunch of cowards doing it to these kids. What are you doing? What the hell are you doing, NCAA? Cincinnati has a Final Four team in the making with these two. Maybe that's a stretch. But Aziz Bandago's a superstar. The guards on this team are electric. I've dedicated my entire life 
I didn't go to UC, but to watching these games and rooting on these Bearcats. And I've been waiting for a freaking Final Four. We all have. We thought we had it. Going to take down Sister Jean in 2018. And we lost to Nevada. Excuse me. We were kicking Nevada's ass. We lost to Nevada. And the NCAA is going to do this to us right now. I mean, what are we thinking, Houdini? We have any chance that we get a miracle from Dave Yost as this one goes to court? Or are we dealing with what we have? Dude, I don't know if we have any attorneys in the chat, but unfortunately I did, you know, pre-law, like I did a class on law and it didn't go well for me in college. So I don't know what the rules are, but I, I thought people were saying that if you went to, um, if you took it to court, then essentially you could have them play in the meantime. I don't know if that's accurate at all. It's the rigmarole, get... right? It's the rigmarole. Yeah, rigamaro. I've been trying to get some rigamaro. more details rigamaro. on it. And it, it just... It just pisses me off because the NCAA, clearly, this is, you know, a little analogy for you. It's it's almost like they know they're losing control, right? Like, people are starting to say, why do we even have the NCAA? And they're hanging on to any power they have by denying Dude, eligibility. Idiots. It's like when yeah. you're 17 and, you know, your stepdad tries to ground you because he knows he's got two more months of you in the house. And you're like, screw you, brother. I'm, I'm out of here in two months, okay? Jeff, Bill, this you shut the hell up, Bill. This isn't your house, yeah. Bill. Who the hell are you? Yeah. I'm the You're man not my of the real house, dad. Bill. I'm the man of the exactly. house, Bill. God. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. And all they're doing is imagine being, you know, 20 years old in your prime, and they're just stealing a year of college basketball. So many people want to play they're this thieves. game. They're thieves. Like, clearly, they what they did was that they changed the rule in 2023 right before Aziz – committed and transferred and they made it more stringent on how you can transfer and you're telling me the um the mental health they get to decide if the mental health reason is accurate or not he didn't know he's an international player he knew nobody he lived in utah you think that's good no he, he wanted to get closer to people that he knew really mental health. yeah so, like what but the it, hell yeah it, come on it just pisses me off because I, I think they're stealing a season from us if they don't let these two kids play. And I, I honestly thought Aziz had a much better chance than Jamil. I don't know the ins and outs of exactly what Jamil filed for. But, I mean, cross your fingers and hope Jamil Reynolds can play because I think he would make a massive impact on this team. Um, but, I don't know, it's just a shame. It's just a, it's sick. It's disgusting, it's dirty, and it's deceitful what they're doing to these kids. Here's the exact quote. Um, let's start it off with, Yost said, I'm going to do it in the Dave Yost voice. Um, God, I want to get that, I could be a hero, baby, back up in the background. Casey, if you know how to get the audio up there somehow um, in the background without taking our faces off the camera, uh, that would be great because Dave Yost is the hero for the Cincinnati Bearcats. But um, he says... The NCAA knows they have a problem because they're down the halls of Congress trying to get a law passed to give them an exemption to antitrust law. They wouldn't be doing that if they thought they were clean on this, and they're not clean. This is the best line ever. Candidly, they're holding a gallon of gas in their lap and playing with matches. Hold on. If I scream into the mic, then it, like, reverberates. I can't figure it out, so I got to move the mic real quick. But You tell them, Dave Yost! You tell him, Dave Yost. Come on, baby. Uh, here's another one that he had. Any legal action, whether individually by Bandago or in the form of an antitrust suit, could um, take as long as a few weeks to be filed in court. The one thing that does seem clear is that Bandago's pursuit of immediate eligibility is far from over. Warm up your hands, and then here's a good quote. If we end up in court, the litigation could end up burning down the NCAA's precious operation. You kids going on your precious field trip. Oh, the precious field trip's over, NCAA. Oh, the precious field trip's over. They're making some of the money now or the players. You're not getting what you want. He says, I just don't understand why they're so against reform, so against competition, so against fair play for the kids, Yo said. But if they want to fight, baby, we know how to fight. Dave Yost, Attorney General. I mean, we all know who the Bearcats are rooting for. I have no idea what 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 sector this guy is on the side of politics. I don't give a damn. Dave Yost, ha. 
Salute. I, I just love that. Um, it seems like a lot of people in politics, whether it be senators, governors, they love to get into eligibility for players at colleges. And I'm all for it. Like Marco Rubio wrote, like, I don't know. I think he passed like 12 laws to get somebody eligible at God knows what, uh, like Miami, Florida. Uh, the thing that pisses me off is though, um, Terry mentioned it on the, if they're not going to make Aziz eligible, then no two-year transfer should be eligible. Like it, 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 the way they do it is so arbitrary, and I don't know what UC did to piss somebody off, or maybe maybe it's somebody in the chat, maybe it's one of us that pissed off the NCAA, and they're out to get us. Why Aziz should have been shut and closed that he is eligible to play basketball this year, and it's just it's disheartening because God, the problem is I don't think that he's going to play. If, if we can't get him on the court this year, I think he's gone. I mean, he's projected to, to be an NBA draft pick. So why would he sit around and, and, you know, deal with college for another year? Although Clifton has really, really skyrocketed in my power rankings of uh, college cities. They've ramped it up. Yeah, they've ramped it up. Maybe Woody's can maybe Woody's can keep his ease. A couple of liquor pitchers, all of a sudden he's like, you know, maybe I got to stay for another year, figure things out. I, I don't know. It just It just sucks, man. I was thinking that he's more of a uh, an Adriatico's guy. Do they still have that? What was that pizza that they had right on the corner there, right by Woody's? Was it was it Papadino's? No, it wasn't Papa. Was it Papadino's? The one that went out of business because too many people were dying yeah. and dashing. I, it wasn't yeah. Papa. It was one of those. I know they still got Max down there, but yeah, there was a a real bad crisis, a pandemic. Some would say of of young twenty year olds going in there shit housed and running off. I, I try to tell the owner, I go, listen, just to help you out, you got to get people to pay before they get their food. These people have had 14, four locos. They don't even know they didn't pay. They just run out of the damn establishment. So shout out to that. They were great, but they did shut down because nobody paid for their food. Hashtag Yost 2024 from Reds Daily. Uh, we got 14 in the stream right now. Thanks, everyone, for joining us on uh, Chatterbox Bearcats tonight. Yeah, you guys have been great. Um, any any closing thought? Yeah, electric. On a Friday night against literally the worst team in Division One. I. I mean, with all due respect to Detroit Mercy, there's no one in here to back them up. Like, I don't think any of their student-athletes, you can't say student-athletes anymore. See, NCAA, I can't even say student-athletes with a straight face on anymore. They're not student-athletes. You're running a damn business. You're running a damn business, and it's one that stinks. It needs reform. Bring me in there. Bring Houdini in there. I mean, look at this guy right now in Gary, Indiana. Look at that setup with the fan in the background. He could be the next Mark Emmert. I mean, Mark Emmert, bless. Jacob Broadbeck could be the next Mark Emmert. Thanks for joining the uh, the chat, Jacob Broadbeck. Yeah, I mean, Deanna is probably the closest to a Detroit Mercy fan. She's familiar with Gary, Indiana. So, I mean, we we have the opposing team essentially in the chat, and she seems to love what the Cats did. So, I'm I'm excited about it. Now she's if she knows Papa Dino's, then she's a diehard Bearcats <laughs> fan. I know that for a fact. Um, here's a good one. Cincinnati covers first time of the season. So one and one are the Bearcats against the spread. I always hate betting against UC. So I stayed away from it tonight when I saw that big 23 and a half, but it was basically a cover by halftime. You know that they were rolling in this one. Uh, CJ Anthony got to score some points. That's when, you know, it's extremely lopsided. Last thing I wanted to get to no Rayvon Griffith in this one. Wes Miller alluded to the fact that he may be redshirted before the game. I like to think that Rayvon Griffith could help this team with his shooting ability strictly as an athlete that hits threes, but you know, maybe it's just too much of a log jam at the guard position. That's what I think. I know uh, in our separate group chats, you were pretty furious about Rayvon Griffith not playing. And I made sure to remind you, you've only actually seen him play against high school players. So just to assume that he deserves minutes might be a long shot. Um, but I think that's exactly what it is. There's a, a too many similar players to him right now. And not that he couldn't help this team, but maybe Wes is looking at the future right now and saying, hey, we can get another year eligibility with him. And the, the one thing especially, and, and maybe he can't transfer anymore because the NCAA sucks, but you want to keep him engaged and keep him happy because I think he is definitely a talent. And what you hate to see is, let's say he doesn't play this year and he, you know, skyrockets out of here to another school. So that's the the thing that all college coaches have to deal with now that even your bench, you got to keep those guys happy, right? And, and I'm assuming Rayvon, if he does get redshirted, 
kind of agreed to this and said, Hey, sure. This is, you know, at least he's a local kid. He's got family here. So I, I think he's got a good, you know, bubble around him. Um, but then again, we could have an injury against Eastern Washington Sunday. All of a sudden, Raymond Griffith is in the lineup. So we'll see what happens. All right, let's end the uh, the podcast version before we get to one more thing on the YouTube. But uh, here we go. Here's how the magic works is we'll edit the, uh, I guess, this part in after. Three, two, and one. The red light's on, as I said. All right, thanks for watching. Three, two, one. Take two, Houdini. Should we go with the take three? Three, two, one. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening to Chatterbox Bearcats. If you like the show, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe so it pops up the morning after every single game. Next up for Cincinnati, Sunday, November 12th against Eastern Washington. That game's at noon. I think almost every single human being in the world that is a Bearcats fan and also a Cincinnati Bearcat or a Bengals fan will have the, uh, the double screen up. You know, they'll be at Paul Brown Stadium a at a tailgate or inside the game with Fubo on or I guess ESPN plus, whatever it may be. You know, just kind of just kind of box score hunting, seeing what's going on with the cats, making sure they win. Eastern Washington's kind of in a the- tough one with Ole Miss right now. So hey, don't don't sleep. Like Eastern Washington could be That's a Chris competitive Beard, yeah. game. Yeah. Yeah, you have yeah, you have no idea. Uh programs come out of nowhere all the time. But the Bearcats two and oh, Chatterbox Bearcats, we will see you next time. All right. Now, for those of you that are on the YouTube right now, we want to tell you, if you like the show, we got 14 of you here. Well, I don't know if 14 of you right now go. This is cross promotion. Go to this, uh, this, the, the page, the chatter podcast, um, or just the, the podcast app, the chatter type it in right now, subscribe to the show. And if you hate this little intro video for the show, if you're like, these guys don't seem funny at all, you can unsubscribe right there. But we appreciate you tuning in tonight. The chatter, here's what it's all about. Casey, roll the tape, and then we'll get you guys out of here. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. What if I told you that no two paths are ever the same? That different roads oftentimes lead to the spot where it all began. What if I told you two childhood friends came together to take over the podcast world? Where's my snare? Bella Nova! Bella Nova should not be in the tournament! Hey, everybody, how are you? Chuck Walter here. This sweatshirt's getting a little hot in here. It's sorry about it, Pittsburgh! Better luck tomorrow! Cincinnati! How we doing tonight? The only thing on my mind this year is getting back to the state championship and smoking as much resin as I possibly can with my buddies. It's the Skyline Chili Eating Duo you love. Oh, sweet heavens. Back in action. This is The Chatter.